What is good? Fuck. Good. <laughs> Everyone. Shoobs here. <laughs> this is so scuffed. <laughs> I just want to note that I was sent this board for a honest review, but I'm not paid for the review in any way and this is a prototype so there are details that are subject to change. What is good everyone, Shubes here. Today we'll be looking at this beauty. Oh, it's, it's, it's a chunker. Oh shit, I forgot I had the brass bottom. I almost broke my desk, oh god. This is the Mode 65 from Mode Keyboards, the creator of the famous Mode 80, which I have a pretty long history with on this channel. F in the chat, I'll miss you Mode 80. However, this is a whole nother beast of a keyboard with one of the best customizability in terms of aesthetics and sound and feel that I have come across. So the board itself is a three piece construction with the top case. Uh, bottom case and this back piece seamless with no visible screws on the outside and it is pretty damn clean very very clean look at that shit oof but anyways the screws to open the board are hidden behind the back piece which is connected via these two magnets here you can see the four screws that hold it together but uh, the connection is very tight, but my only gripe with these in the prototype... Let me put it back on. Oh, that is satisfying though, <laughs> the way it just snaps on there. But my only gripe with this in the prototype unit is that it doesn't connect as tight as I would want it to. There is a slight gap if from the top-down view, uh, as you can see here, when I press it down. Yeah, there is a slight amount of gap with this magnetic sort of... Uh, sort of connection. Looking at the internals of the board, it's quite standard. Connection is via daughter board, but there is a very cool part and unique part of this board, and that is that it can be built with three different types of mounts. Also, look at this PCB. This shit is wild. <laughs> I think this is the first PCB where it's like not like completely a rectangle. The PCB also features these flex cuts in the middle so you get a little bit more of a softer typing experience. First is your tried and true top mount which is when the plate is screwed directly onto the top of the case through these mounting points. Second is a isolated top mount which is interesting. I, well, it was the configuration I was running before this but there are these small little what do you what you might call it? Uh, the silicon plate caps that actually go over the top mounting point, like so. Oh god, <laughs> this shit is actually super hard when your hands are hands are cursed and sticky. Okay, so it goes on to each of the mount top mounting points, and then you screw it in. So it is a bit of a more dampened sort of burger mount top mount. And the last mounting style is the one that is most similar to the Mode 80 and that is the stack mount. And this is where a custom silicon molded base is put onto the bottom of the case. And the plate and the PCB sits on top of this silicon sort of mold. Like so. And then it is sandwiched into the top case without any of the screws mounting it. Uh, this is probably the most dampened sound profile from what I can tell and we will be doing a sound test for each of these different mounting styles later on in the video. So the board is currently running in group by right now. Whoa, holy shit, it's not sold out. An exclusive to a certain region, Pog fucking champion. The board has plans for it to be continuously run as well with a starting price of $2.99. Big shout out to Mode for making it quite accessible and you don't really have to jump through hoops and hurdles to acquire this board. But anyways, what was I saying? Oh yeah, the board is currently running in group buy with the first batch slated to ship out in October 2021. With the pre-order open into 2022 with around a 3 month lead time, this lead time is fast as fuck for a group buy and honestly I'm pretty confident in mode to deliver with how fast and accurate the lead time was for the mode 80. But let's get into the fully customizability 
full, full customizability of this board because this shit is so customizable that mode actually went out and made a whole ass configurator for the board which even renders how your board will look like instantly. By looking at the configurator there are a lot of fucking options with different price points but for $2.99 you get options to most of the color options for the aluminum pieces as well as a FR4 plate in ANSI half ISO or, or ANSI full and uh, why did I say NC half first but <laughs> whatever but with $10 extra getting you a hot swap PCB and for $20 you get the silicon base for the stack mount uh, out of all these options I think the one you definitely want to pick up is the silicon mount base as it adds a whole additional mounting style for just $20 but I know for a fact that for a lot of DJs in this hobby this isn't the case you won't be happy with no standard option you're going to go balls to the wall close your eyes at the price and make the most tricked out board you can cause we are all deranged in the head and need help I just want to advise that the price can go up real fucking quick if you aren't careful. Be sure to check out the configurator to look at the options yourself, but to specify, the plate that comes standard for full plates for both ANSI and ISO will be FR4 or POM, but you can change it to alu, carbon fiber, brass, copper, or even silver mirror for a extra cost. For those that want a softer and more flexible and bouncy typing experience, there is a ANSI half plate option. Sorry to ISO half plate enjoyers, no options avail for that, but for half plates there is a option for FR4 or POM with no additional cost or black, aluminum, or carbon fiber for a little bit more extra. It's important to note that only the solder PCB will be compatible with the half plate because well, the switches will not be secure enough if it was hot swap. Anyway, with all that out of the way, let's finally get to the build. Here is the package. Pretty good presentation. Components. Each thing is individually packaged. Top case and bottom case. So for the board, I was sent both the brass bottom and the aluminum bottom from Mode. There will be sound tests for both configurations with all the different mounting styles later on in the video. You better watch it because I put a lot of time. Ooh. They send you a screwdriver with it now? That's pretty sick. That is pretty cool. It's a pretty nice screwdriver. So I did this build on Twitch, uh, you can follow me on ShubesTube uh, if you want to come check out my streams, but basically I have a redemption for uh, the channel points and you can use 2000 channel points to get a sheesh. And uh, my chat collectively decided to spam this redemption and literally dump all their shoops coin yeah that's my currency on twitch but they decided to dump everything they had to stack up over a hundred sheeshes and i gotta tell you after the stream my voice was literally dead i hate all of you on twitch we're starting from 69 everybody keep count of how many sheeshes all right let's put in the switches while counting the sheeshes God, I hate all of you. I hate all of you very, very much. I hope you know that. Oh man, my fucking voice hurts from editing that. <laughs> But uh, the switches that we went with are Cherry Max Blacks, uh, the Hyperglide ones lubed and filmed with 205 grade zero and desk keys, and a black cherry pie on the spacebar. We are building this with the half aluminum plate because that is the one that Mode sent for testing. And the overall build for the board is quite simple. Uh, there is just simple three piece design with the bottom. You have to install the daughter board and then the first configuration we're going with is top mount, so you just install the screws onto the top case and screw it all down. What you think? That looks fucking fire. 
looks pretty good. Looks very clean. So, overall thoughts and impressions on the board, I'll give my take on two different builds, the one featuring the aloe bottom, which I will look at as a $320 viewpoint because of the plate cost, and the brass bottom version, which I will look at as a $420, nice option. Also, this review is based on the half plate build, so if you're going with the full plate, my thoughts may not match. Well, right off the bat, the brass is much, much heavier and feels super fucking premium. The aloe bottom just doesn't have that heft to it and is fairly light, and although the board's finishing in QC is superb, it doesn't feel as top of the line as with the brass. As for the sound profile of the board, it is very different from the Mode 80. It sounds much louder, much more resonant and higher pitched and not as thocky. Overall, even with the silicon stack mount, the board itself doesn't have that super muted sound that the Mode 80 has, but that's not a bad thing. I think overall this board has character, and unlike the Mode 80, it has a sound signature that gives it character where the Mode 80 just sounds like foam, and personally, I really like it. Additionally, on the topic of sound profiles, the brass and alu have noticeable differences. The brass bottom has much less reverb and case resonance than the alu, from what I can tell, and is overall not as echoey. I think I can tell the most difference of the two materials on the mods, especially the spacebar as there's noticeably more reverb there with the alu bottom compared to the brass. The sound of the alphas are also a bit tighter and a tad deeper on the brass as well. For the typing experience, so we the typing feel of this board with the half plate on top and isolated top mount is superb. It has an insane amount of flex with the flex cuts on the PCB, and the board has a ton of bounce which you feel with the vibrations when you bottom out on each switch. I'm very biased though because a soft and bouncy board and playlist boards are my preference and I think this really matches well with that. As for the stack mount typing feel, it's actually very stiff with the huge silicon right underneath the PCB with not much room for flex there. and. I mean, I'm not a huge fan of super stiff typing experiences, for so for the typing feel, the stack mount wasn't it. So going into the three different mounting styles, the top mount is the most resonant and echoey with a very large sort of open sound and presence. The typing feel, like I said, is very soft, very bouncy with the half plate, and it does have the harshest sounding mods as well due to the mounting points on the top mount. The stack mount is the opposite of that, it's the tightest sounding with a clean sort of pop to it. It is also the most 
dampened in terms of sound due to the huge silicon base as well, making it the stiffest in terms of typing experience. So isolated top mount was a surprise for sure. I gotta say it's the mounting style that I prefer the most for my configuration. It is a great middle ground in terms of sound between top and stack mount with a sort of tighter and slightly dampened sound profile with the softer mods while retaining all of the bounce and soft typing experience that the half plate provides with the top mount. I think if you're doing a half plate build on this board, the isolated top mount is a very good way to go. All in all, I think the board is very good for the price. It provides you with a ton of customizability, especially with the different mounting styles to suit your taste, not only aesthetically, but also through sound and feel. I think the brass option is sorta of worth it in my opinion if you got some extra cash and you like the slight difference in sound and want that super premium heavy feel. However, the aluminum option straight up for less than $320 is a great deal and I'm pretty happy to see mode coming out with a unique and interesting board like this that is both accessible and high quality. Anyways guys, thank you so much for the continued support. Same message as always, appreciate it. Not you Twitch chat though, you guys made me like lose my voice for a day and a half. <laughs> This was a very long video to edit, but hope it helped you out if you were deciding on picking up the Mode 65. I think it is a good board, uh, especially for the price. Uh, more videos and reviews and whatever, I don't know, coming soon. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.